my uh, gosh, thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this main event, you know everybody's been looking forward to this one for a long time, so I just want to ask from your point of view, like, what's the most interesting aspect of it to you? Because there's part, like, the storyline that's, that it's all built up to, but then there's part, like, just... The, the style of the fight itself. So what's, what's the most exciting thing for you? Right. I mean, for me in my role, obviously, it's it's more of the storyline. Um, I, I think you can't deny that we all know this is a fight that we've been looking forward to. There are two styles or something that, you know, we love that kind of clash inside the octagon. But for me, the storyline is so interesting. And being at that fight in Las Vegas, you know, when it all kind of went down and the drama just was heightened, I think it adds something. You know, I don't think that they needed any drama to sell this fight. But I think because it's there, there is certainly another level of interest. You have to wonder how that's gonna, going to affect people. I mean, Korean Zombie even made some comments about, you know, handling his emotions and I was saying negative things and that wasn't really me. So you can tell, I mean, it, it is affecting them in one way or another. So you just, you kind of wait and see like, oh, how do they look when they get into the octagon? You know, what's what's their walkout like? Do they seem like emotions getting to, getting to them? So I think it just kind of adds another layer to a fight that we are already so excited about. Yeah. Well, we found out in the last couple of days, obviously, that Henry Gracie's not going to be here for Ortega. Now, yeah. we talk to all these fighters, you know, behind the scenes. Um, I think they tell us what they want us to hear sometimes, <laughs> you know, they know. Um, what do you think? When you talk to them, I mean, how much do you think that's going to affect Brian and, like, Will they be more honest with you than they are? Because I know you watch our coverage too. Will they be more honest with you behind the scenes than they will with us? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a level of trust with us. And we have these fighter meetings where, you know, they're closed door. Nothing that is said in those meetings will ever be repeated until time for the broadcast. And there's often times where they'll tell us things that they still don't want repeated at all. Um, I think it's important they, they have that kind of trust with us. Um, we're around the world with them. Like, we're, we're all here, you know? And so um, I, I flew and Brian Ortega's crew was right next to me and then he came out and I will tell you they were so relaxed they were having fun they were playing games for like hours they were really enjoying themselves and you know Brian seemed to be enjoying the process which is always something that we talk about with our athletes and you know it, it seems like that always benefits um, you know our different fighters to, to be able to find some joy in this experience and so with Hunter being there I mean of course I'm sure it's going to be a voice that he's missing but I, I have no doubt that there's going to be a FaceTime or something you know minutes before the walkout or maybe even like some sort of live FaceTime where he's just watching the warm-up I think when you have someone that valuable to you, um, it, you don't just say like, okay, well you couldn't come, so now you're not included at all. I'm sure there'll still be some incorporation of, of however that works. I actually, we have our official meeting with Brian after this, so we'll get a little more info on it then. Obviously everybody's tuned in the main event, but are there any other like, whether it be fights like because of a matchup or maybe because of an interview you've done or a story that you know, like is there anything else that like people maybe should be looking forward to that maybe they're not? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm excited that we signed Gamrot. Um, I think that's really great. I was just watching his fights last night. Um, I love the Chukagian Andrade fight. Um, I don't think it's getting enough love. And I think it's so interesting. Like Jessica Andrade, former champion, her third weight class in the UFC. It's actually, I don't think that we realize it, but it's been done by a couple of women before to have, you know, kind of that triple threat, three different weight classes in the UFC. But She's always so fun to watch, and Caitlin Chukagan, you know, she had the title shot, obviously, then she beat Valentina's sister, um, Antonina, but you can tell she wants to be right there, and this is this is a big fight for women's 125, it really is. Um, I'm super looking forward to that, and then also Jonathan Martinez and Thomas Almeida, like, I just... I just think they're such great guys. Like, you know, uh, Jonathan Martinez is so quiet. And Thomas Almeida is a pretty um, soft-spoken guy as well. But when they get in there, they're just killers. And with Thomas's long layoff, um, I, I'm really curious to see how he returns almost three years. And I was um, fortunate enough to see him work out at the PI quite often when he was training in Las Vegas. So that's one that I, I really piqued my interest. And I think that's a great way to start off the main card. Nice. Last one for me outside of this. Uh, the documentary came out, and obviously you and Joseph were a huge part of, you know, kind of the last couple of episodes. I guess what was that like watching it, you know, and, and um, you know, I guess having so much of your personal life kind of kind of be out there as well. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Really? Yeah. On purpose? Yes. Interesting. I mean, it's the worst day of our lives, so, like, what is there to relive, you know, and I... I was there for it. So, uh, you know, I haven't seen it. Everyone's been super nice about it. And I have to say, um, Rory, the producer and director of it, was absolutely incredible. Him and his entire crew were wonderful to work with. They were so sensitive and like, they understood the situation and had such great respect. And they were so wonderful even after, but 
you know, I mean, I don't mind sharing my personal life at all because... Okay, I thought you did be what you hadn't done it, maybe, or...? I mean, sure, like, for because of how it ended, but it's also, like, you know, like, that's a, that's a risk, and that's a part of our life, but, like, to be able to show other people, like, this is how we love each other, but also there's going to be highs and lows in life, and there could be moments that are worse than that, you know? We're healthy. We have good families. We're able to make a living for each other. Like, yeah, he lost a fight, and his dream obviously was shattered right there but we got to go home to our beautiful house with our health and you know see our families and stuff so we have to kind of take it all in stride and I think that it's Joseph is a beautiful example to a lot of people um and I'm so proud of him for that so as much as I don't want to watch it I know that it provided um something good for other people to see I was gonna say it's, it's clearly hard for you to talk about but I mean do you see the value in it like maybe helping you know fans or you know newcomers to sport realize like what this what goes on behind the scenes yeah i think unfortunately especially with the internet oftentimes people forget that you know these are human beings with feelings for me in my role i always like take joseph into consideration so whoever's in front of me I want to treat them the way I want Joe to be treated. And I want to tell their stories the way I want Joe's story to be told. Because, yeah, he's a beast inside the octagon. But he's an artist. And he loves fashion. And, like, he's a great person. And he's been sober for 15 years. Like, those are stories that matter. You know? And so I always take the approach of, of storytelling the human side of these athletes. Because, yeah, we're all here to see him fight inside an octagon. But there's, there's so much more to each individual that it's important. And it doesn't always go our way. And, you know... There are times, I'm sure every person in this room has had somebody where they're like, oh, you're just gutted, right? Because you know they're a good person or you know their background. And I think it's important to remember that for people. I think, you know, in MMA especially, but in all sports, oftentimes that's forgotten. Uh, you mentioned storylines and what have you, but if you look at Brian Ortega and Korean Zombie, they're probably two of the more laid-back fighters, yeah. by the way, and yet they probably have more heat since the Izzy Cost fight. Are you surprised that... It's those two that are bringing the storyline? You know, I, probably, yeah. Especially with Korean Zombie. Um, he's, he speaks English, but not like a ton of English. So it's not like they're, you know, kind of, they can jab at each other all the time or anything like that. Um, yeah, it is a little bit surprising, but you know, they're two incredible competitors. And I think that ultimately is really what is leading to this is they both want to get you know to that title and for brian get another shot at whoever's holding the belt um and so i i think it really comes down to that but it is surprising especially like when you see them outside of fighting they're just gonna chill you know they're not really they're not really doing anything they're very soft-spoken so yeah it is a little surprising you think that just shows every fighter can be pushed to that? absolutely absolutely i mean i even think you know, they're a great example, and, and for, like, the diehards of the sport, you take somebody like Hannah Cyphers, right, who, who, who hates doing media, and she knows she has to get better at it, but she, she's terrified when she does it, but then she goes in the octagon, and that's where, where she wants to be, and that's what she wants to do, and she turns it on. So I think, yeah, it's absolutely also an example to people, like, you don't know who you're talking to on the street, so it's best not to mess with anybody. Cool. Cool. Thanks. Thank you.